Welcome to this lecture that covers moles and molar mass. So when we're talking about moles and molar mass, it probably you know, uh, brings back nightmares of uh, general chemistry in, in high school where you do stoichiometry and you got to do all these bridges and stuff like that. And you're like, how is this helpful? When am I ever going to use this? Why do I need to know the chemical composition of these compounds and convert them and blah, blah, blah. So here's just a couple examples of how that can actually be helpful in real life. Uh, for example, the FDA recommends a person consumes less than 2.4 grams of sodium per day. And as you get older, if you um, are one of those that develop high blood pressure, then this is something you really have to um, you know, focus on. Well, if you have to, uh, if you have to consume less than two point four grams of sodium per day, how much NaCl can you have? Right, sodium chloride or table salt. Um, sodium is just Na, right? But we don't just eat sodium uh, metal; that would be very dangerous. Uh, but we can eat sodium chloride, and that's where we get most of our sodium from. Um, so. We have to consume less than 2.4 grams of sodium, but how much NaCl can we actually have? Okay, so um, there's a question. So we could use this molar mass and uh, stoichiometry to help figure that out. Or say you get a job with a mining company and you need to figure out how much iron they can actually extract from a given amount of iron ore. Again, we can use the chemical composition, molar mass and stuff um, to help us figure that out. Or perhaps um, you've gotten, you know, your environmental science degree or something and you get a job with an organization that wants to develop hydrogen as a fuel source. And you ask, and it, they ask you to figure out how much hydrogen they can extract from a given amount of water. Well, you can use moles, molar mass, stoichiometry to help you figure that out. So it can actually be useful in real life if you are put into the situation <laughs> in which it can be helpful. All right, so let's start exploring and reviewing this moles and molar mass um, by counting. Good old counting. Um, so if you take a look at the pictures here, how many dogs is, does this dog walker walk? Well, we can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six dogs. Pretty simple, really straightforward, six dogs that this dog walker has. All right, how many nails are in this box? Little harder to uh, figure out if, obviously, if you're looking through the closed box. If you open it up, you could probably count, um, you know, how many nails are in it, no problem. And it might take you a few minutes to do so, but it's possible. Um, now, what about... This is uh, some carbon here um, in, a, in a little dish. It's, uh, for example, in the you know, lab or something. How many atoms are on that dish? That is a bit harder to figure out. Okay? Because we can't see those uh, carbon atoms like we see those dogs you know, that the dog walker is walking. Uh, atoms are super, 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 super tiny. And so it's going to be a lot harder to count them. So we can't count them by physically looking at them. Um, what we do is we have to count them by their mass. And in fact, if you go um, to you know a hardware store and you look for nails, all right, um, they actually sell them by their mass as well. That's why this page is called Counting Nails by the Pound. They sell nails, nails by the pound. You can get one pound box. Um, five pound box, 10 pound box. Okay, so they don't sell the nails as, you know, 50 nails for whatever. It's um, actually by the pound. So um, it basically, we're going to count, we can count, you know, number of nails like we count the number of carbon atoms um, in that dish. And we can do that by its weight. All right, so the good old mole. All right, so remember that we have different words that mean numbers, right? A dozen is 12, um, a ream is 500, a pair is two, a few is, you know, roughly three, 
um, you know, those kind of numbers um, are, or I'm sorry, those kind of words represent numbers. Well, here's another one that uh, you should remember from high school chemistry, the mole. The mole has a value of not 2, 3, 12, or, you know, 500. It has the value of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. Okay, and again, please remember that uh, this program that I use doesn't like uh, superscripts or subscripts. So on your notes, it's the 23rd power, so um, keep that in mind. All right, so 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. And we um, give that, that number uh, the name Avogadro's number, okay, even though he wasn't the one to actually discover it, but they give him his credit because he's the one who did a lot of thinking behind it. Um, if you want to know more about that, you can take a look at the textbook. All right, so two things you need to know about the mole. A mole of anything, whether you're talking about atoms, you know, hairs on your head, or donuts that you eat, um, a mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 in the 23rd of that thing. So if you have a mole of donuts, you're having 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. All right, that's, that's an incredible amount. Um, second thing you need to know is that the numerical value of the mole is defined as being equal to the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of pure carbon-12. So basically it's saying um, that... <clears throat> 12 grams of pure carbon-12 is going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in it. And no, they did not count the atoms in it. Um, they came up with this number um, through mathematical reasoning. And again, if you want to know more about that, um, you can Google it. All right. So this mole establishes a relationship between mass in grams and the number of atoms Okay, or Avogadro's number. So it allows us to count atoms by weighing them, just like you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you can count nails by weighing them. Because if you count, you know, if you weigh um, 12 nails and it weighs 6 grams, all right, you can use that in order to figure out, okay, well, if I have 500 grams of nails, you know, how many individual, how many numbers of nails would that be? Okay, so um, we can relate the mass to the numbers of atoms now by using this mole. All right, so we can use Avogadro's number in order to convert between moles and the number of atoms in a, of a substance. So we can use the conversion factors that we have here. Um, one mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or, which is equal, to 6.022 times 23rd atoms over one mole. So which one we use is going to depend on what we're given and what we need to find. So here's an example problem. How many atoms are in 3.5 moles of helium? Okay. So if we have 3.5 moles of helium, how many atoms is that going to be? So we've uh, defined our given. Okay, and we know what we need to find. So what we do is, remember, we always start with what we're given. So we're going to start with 3.5 moles of He. Please always remember to put your units and the substance so we're not getting confused. And because we start with moles, that means we want to use the conversion factor with mole on the bottom so that it will cancel out. So we're going to use this one here. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of He over one mole. Okay, so remember these are equivalents, the top and bottom equal each other. One mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. All right, so we can see that the, the moles of He are going to cancel, and what we're going to be left with is atoms. So let's do this calculation in our calculators. We just pump, uh, punch in 3.5 and then when you're when you're doing uh, any large numbers with exponents it's a great idea to put parentheses 
when you are actually punching it into the calculator. That way the order of operations um, is done correctly and you will get the right answer. So when we plug this into our calculator, we will end up with the answer 2.1. Okay, looking at sig figs, we're going to have two sig figs. That's what we start with. Um, so 2.1 times 10 to the 24th atoms of helium. Okay, so um, again, we can use the mole to convert between uh, moles to atoms, and we can also go the other way from atoms to moles by just using the other conversion factor. All right, so we did one example. Here's a you try it um, problem. A silver ring contains 1.1 times 10 to the 22 atoms. How many moles of atoms are in this ring? Okay, so always, you know, figure out what we're given. We're given 1.1 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of silver. All right, and we need to find out how many moles that is. We need to find the number of moles of silver. So in um, everything that we do, we always are going to start with our given. So we've got 1.1 times 10 to the 22nd okay, atoms of silver and we need to find moles of silver All right and so we're going to use the conversion factor where mole is on top and the 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms is on the bottom okay that way these atom units are going to cancel and we'll be given or left with moles of ag so if we put that in our calculator, remember, always, always, always put these guys in parentheses as you're punching it in, okay? Um, you'll do 1.1 times 10 to the 22 times 1, okay, so 1.1 times 10 to the 22 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, and here we're going to get 0 0.018 moles of silver. Okay, so again, always check uh, when you're done. Does this, uh, first of all, is it sig figs? All right, well, we start with two sig figs here, and we've got two sig figs in the answer, so that's good. Do we have our units? Yes, moles of AG. That's good. Okay, and then lastly, does the number make sense? And in this case, it does. If you take a look at what we are, uh, the numbers that we or dividing, we start with a smaller number times 10 to the 22 and we're dividing it by a bigger number times 10 to the 23. So we're going to end up with a decimal of some sorts because um, we're going to have a smaller number and divide it by a bigger number. So that means we're going to have a number less than 1. So yes, this does make sense. 0 0.018 moles of silver are in this ring. Okay, so we reviewed how moles and atoms are related with our Avogadro's number of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now we're going to take a look at how grams and moles are related. So the mass of one mole of an atom is called its molar mass. All right. So if we have one mole of a substance, the mass of one mole is called our molar mass. Um, and that's actually equal to the element's atomic weight So um, on the periodic table. So it's kind of mis a misleading, um, uh, what's it called, a name, I guess, um, for the atomic mass. It's not the mass of an actual atom, okay? It's the mass of a mole of those atoms. So, for example, um, the mass of atomic weight for hydrogen is, you know, in this case, they've got lots of sig figs, 1.0079 grams per mole. So if we had a mole um, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen, and you weighed them on a scale, it would weigh 1.0079 grams. You know, same thing with uh, chlorine. If you had 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of chlorine, and you put them on the scale, um, they would weigh 35.4527 grams. 
Okay, so that's what we call molar mass. Now we can use the molar mass of any element as a conversion factor between grams and moles of that element because we know um, how many grams would be in one mole of it. So we can use that to convert um, back and forth between grams and moles of an element. So here's an example. How many moles of carbon are in a 0 0.5 gram diamond? Okay, so if you've got a diamond um, and you weigh it on the scale and it weighs 0 0.58 grams, how many moles of carbon is uh, making up that diamond? Okay, well here's our given, 0 0.058 grams. And we need to find the number of moles of carbon. So we always, always, always start with what we're given. 0 0.58 grams of carbon. Okay, and so to get rid of these um, gram units, we're going to need to multiply it by a conversion factor that has grams on the bottom. And we need to find moles, so moles of carbon will be on the top. All right, and we can do this because we have we know that we can look at the periodic table and see um, how many grams are in one mole of carbon. And in this case, one mole of carbon is equivalent to 12.01 uh, grams of carbon. Okay, so here we're, we're going to cancel out our uh, grams of carbon. We're going to end up with moles of carbon, which is exactly what we want. And so we just do the math. 0 0.58 times 1, and then divide that by 12.01. And that's going to be equivalent to 0 0.048 moles of carbon. All right, so we go back and check sig figs. All right, well, we got two sig figs to start with here, so we need two sig figs in our answer, so that's good. Um, we have our unit, moles of carbon. And last but not least, does the number make sense? Well, we're starting out with a small number and we're dividing it by a big number, so that means we should end up with a smaller number than we started with, and that is the case. Um, 0 0.048 is definitely smaller than 0 0.58, so it makes sense. All right, so here's another you try it question. We just did one as an example. Here's another one for you to practice with. So the idea is that with this, these you try it ones, uh, you pause, try it, and then restart me so that I can show you if you did it right or wrong. Okay, so calculate the number of moles of sulfur in, in 57.8 grams of sulfur. So always, you know, write down what we're given. We're given 57.8 grams of sulfur, and we need to find how many moles that is. Okay. All right, so we always start with what we're given, 57.8 grams of sulfur. And we're going to use a conversion factor so that these grams of sulfur cancel out. So we're going to have grams of sulfur on the bottom, and we're going to moles of sulfur, so that will be on the top. Okay, we can go from between moles and grams of the same substance anytime very easily just using our periodic table. So for sulfur, one mole is equal to 32.07 grams. So if we had one mole of sulfur atoms on a scale, it would weigh 32.07 grams. All right, so let's do a little math. We're going to do 57.8 times 1, and then divide that by 32.07. All right, we put that in the calculator, and we ended up with 1.8 <clears throat> moles of sulfur. All right, so let's just take a quick check. Our units cancel. We have our units in, the, in there. How about sig figs? Well, we start out with 1, 2, 3 sig figs. And actually, in my answer right now, I only have two sig figs. So um, in a calculator, it ends up being 1.8023 blah, blah, blah. So we'll add that other zero there to make three sig figs and call it good. And last but not least, does this, does this make sense?
Well, we are dividing 57 by a smaller number, 32. So we're going to get a number greater than 1 uh, because we're dividing a big, num uh, big number by a small number. So um, we will get a number greater than 1 this time. So everything pans out and looks good. All right, so so far we have reviewed how we go from grams to moles, okay, and how we've gone from moles to atoms. Now we're going to connect the bridge and go from grams to moles to atoms in one fail swoop. Okay, so we're going to convert between grams of an element and number of atoms. So if we've got, you know, if you remember the you know, scale with the carbon atoms um, on the first page of our notes, we can go from the grams of carbon and figure out exactly how many atoms that is, um, just like our question was on that first page. How many atoms of carbon were on that scale? All right, so first... We convert from grams to moles, then we go from moles to atoms. And in fact, we always have to remember that moles is the middleman in chemistry, always. Okay, if you're starting with something other than moles, and you are going something, you know, you have to find something other than moles, then you got to go to moles first in any direction. Okay, any way you slice it, moles is always the middleman. So let's take a look at an example. How many atoms are in that ring, that, I'm sorry, not the ring, the diamond um, that weighs 0 0.5 grams? Okay, so how many atoms are in 0 0.5 grams of carbon? So we display our given, we have to find the atoms. Let's figure this out. All right, so we always start with what we're given, 0 0.58 grams of carbon. Okay, and we need to go to atoms. Well, remember in our conversion factors, um, we have grams and moles, okay, or we have moles and atoms, okay, but we don't have any that go directly from grams to atoms. So this is going to be a two step problem. We need to go from grams to moles first and then from moles to atoms. So let's get rid of these gram units. So we're going to multiply it by uh, a ratio where grams of carbon is on the bottom. And um, so remember we said moles is always the middleman. So we're going to do moles of carbon first. All right, and then to get rid of those moles of carbon, we will could do it by the conversion factor with moles on the bottom. And we'll have atoms of carbon on the top. All right, so let's fill in our numbers here. One mole of carbon is equal to 12.01 grams. And remember, one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. All right, so if we do this math, we're going to multiply all the numbers on the top and divide it by the numbers on the bottom. And when we do that, remember, keeping in mind, putting those parentheses around that big um, Avogadro's number, we get 2.9 times 10 to the 22 atoms of carbon. Okay, so let's take a quick check of our number. We've got sig figs, start off with two, we have two in our answer, that's good. We're going to cancel all of the units so that we end up with just atoms of carbon, which is good. And does the number make sense? All right, well, we're going to um, multiply 0.58 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So we'll end up with a number that's lower than 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then we divide that number by 12, which means we'll even end up with a smaller number than that. So this does make sense. If you would have gotten some number times 10 to the 48 or something like that, then it should be a red flag of, hey, that doesn't seem right. All right, but in this case, it pans out well. All right, so here's a you try it example for you guys to do. Um, so go ahead and pause it, try it, and then let's see if you did it right. This question says, how many atoms 
are in an aluminum can with a mass of 16.2 grams. So if we write down what we're given, we're given 16.2 grams of aluminum. And we need to find out, okay, how many atoms are we looking at in this can? Okay, so we're going to go to atoms of aluminum. All right, so in order to figure this out, remember um, there is no conversion factors directly from grams to atoms. We always have to go through moles first. So we go through moles first. Always, always. So let's do that. Let's start with what we're given, 16.2 grams of aluminum. And let's convert that to moles of aluminum by canceling our grams on the bottom. All right, we're not there yet. We got to get to atoms now. So we're going to go to atoms of aluminum and cancel those mole units as well. All right, it's always easiest to set up the units first to make sure that they all cancel. And then you can fill in the numbers. So one mole of aluminum is equal to 26.98 grams. And remember, we look at the periodic table all right, for that conversion factor. Um, now with atoms and moles, remember one mole is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. <clears throat> All right, our last step is just to do the math. Multiply everything on top, divide by everything on the bottom. Keeping in mind to keep to punch in the Avogadro's number with parentheses in your calculator so that um, order of operations is done correctly. So in this case, we get 3.6 times 10 to the 23 atoms of aluminum. Okay, so let's do a little check. Um, units, we've got atoms of aluminum, exactly what we need to find. Um, let's see, sig figs, we start out with three. And actually right now I only have two in our answer. So let's take a look in the calculator. It's 3.6. 6158, so we're going to round that to 3.62, so we have the correct number of sig figs. And last but not least, does this, does this number make sense? All right, so first thing we did was multiplied 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd by 16, so we're going to get a bigger number than um, Avogadro's number, but then we divide it by 26. Um, so we'll end up with the same exponent, but we'll have a smaller number out front since um, we're dividing by a slightly bigger number than uh, the front number that we start with. All right, so it all makes sense, so we're good to go. All right, so so far in this lecture, we've only just been talking about single um, elements. We have not been talking about how, you know, when elements come together to make uh, different compounds or molecules. So um, we can use the same ideas, though, that we were uh, using with those elements to, um, to also um, apply it to compounds as well. So here in this slide, we're going to convert between grams and moles of a compound instead of just a single element. So we said that um, to get you know, the grams per mole of an element, we just look at the periodic table, um, the molar mass of the element. That is true, and we could do the same thing um, with the compound. So the molar mass of the compound is just, um, you know, the formula mass calculated from the atomic mass units on the periodic table, which means that we just take a look at the atoms on the periodic table um, and use the atomic masses to sum up the what the total compound would be. So for example, if we take CO2 um, as an example, we're going to, or CO2 is um, one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. So we're going to take the mass of one carbon atom and we're going to add it to the mass of two oxygen atoms. So 12.01 is carbon. Each atom of oxygen is 16, so we'll times that by two 
and we'll add it to that 12 and we'll end up with 44.01 atomic mass units. So for uh, the molar mass of this compound CO2, it is 44.01 atomic mass units. So here is um, another example. How many moles of CO2 are in 22.5 grams of dry ice? And uh, just like elements, we can use the molar mass of compounds as a conversion factor between grams and moles of that compound. So for given 22.5 grams of CO2, we need to find moles of CO2. We can use the periodic table um, and the molar mass to figure, to figure that out. So let's start with what we're given, 22.5 grams of CO2. All right, we need to get rid of those grams of CO2, so we're going to use a conversion factor where grams is on the bottom so that they cancel. And in this case, we need to find moles of CO2, so we'll put moles on top. All right, and in this case, um, one mole of CO2 is equal to, in fact, we just did that up here, 44.01 grams. All right, so we just do our math, 22.5 times 1, and then divide that by 44.01. And in this case, we get 0 0.511 moles of CO2. Okay, so let's check sig figs. Start out with 3. We have 3. Uh, units, we need to define moles of CO2, and we have moles of CO2. And then last but not least, does this number make sense? Well, we're starting with 22.5, and we're dividing it by a bigger number. So that means we're going to have a decimal or number less than 1. So this does make sense. Dun, 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 dun. Here's another you try it problem. So go ahead and pause. Um, work this out on your note sheet, and then replay to see if you got it right. In this question, it says calculate the mass in grams of 1.75 moles of water. All right, so got to write down what we're given, what we need to find. So we're given 1.75 moles of H2O, and we need to find what the mass is. Okay, so we need to find grams of H2O. All right, so in this case, we are starting with what we're given, 1.75 moles of H2O. And we need to go to grams of H2O. So our moles of H2O need to go on the bottom so that when we do our math, these units cancel and all we're left with is grams. All right, so let's put in some numbers. One mole is equal to how many grams of H2O? Well, if we look on our periodic table, hydrogen is 1.01 grams per mole, and oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole. So if we have two hydrogens, okay, that means we'll have 2.02 .02 grams and we have one oxygen in the compound, 16.00 grams. So if we add those together, we end up with 18.02 grams. All right, so 18.02 grams in one mole. Now we just do our math. 1.7 times, 1.75 times 18.02. In this case, we end up with 31.5 grams of water. Okay, so let's do our quick check. Sig figs, we start out with three. We have three in our answer. We were trying to find grams of H2O, and indeed we did find grams of H2O. And does our number make sense? Well, we have... Um, 1.7 times 1.75, and we're timesing it by 18. So we're going to get a bigger number than 18. Um, you know, one and three fourths greater number. And 
So 31 uh, does make sense. All right, here's our last concept to review from general chemistry and molar mass is converting between grams um, of a compound and the number of molecules. Okay, so first, just like we did with the elements, we're going to go from grams to moles, and then we'll go from moles to molecules. So again, moles is always our middleman in chemistry. So here's an example. Calculate the number of CO2 molecules in 22.5 grams of dry ice. So for given 22.5 grams of CO2, how many molecules of CO2 is that? Okay. Well, again, remember there's no direct um, conversion between grams and molecules. We can go grams and moles, and moles and, and molecules are atoms, but we can't go directly from grams to molecules. So first, we always have to do moles because he's our middleman. So we'll put grams of CO2 on the bottom so that they cancel. And we'll put our moles of CO2 on top since that's the first thing we have to convert to. Um, so in one mole, there is 44.01 grams of CO2, since that's what we just solved for a couple slides back. All right, but we're not there yet because right now we just stopped at moles. We got to get over to molecules. So let's uh, cancel the moles by putting them down here on the bottom of the next conversion factor. And we'll go molecules of CO2 on the top. All right, so one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Remember, in, in the case of um, compounds versus, versus elements, Avogadro's number still stands, whether it's atoms or molecules that you're talking about. So finally, let's just do the math and get what this is equal to. So we'll do 22.5 times 1 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd in parentheses, and we'll divide all of that by 44.01. And in this case, we end up with 3.08 times 10 to the 23 molecules of CO2. All right, so let's do our quick check. Sig figs, we start out with 3. We have three in our answer. For units, we need to find molecules of CO2, and indeed we did that. Last but not least, does the number make sense? Well, um, we've got you know 22.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, so we're going to end up with a bigger number than 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, but then we divide it by 44, which means that we're going to bring it back down again. So 3.08 times 10 to the 23rd does sound reasonable. If we got if we had a number with an exponent that's really really large like 40s or 50s, then that would be a red flag. Or if we got a number that was very small or had no exponent, that would also be a red flag. So, um, but this time it turned out perfect. All right, here's our final slide for these notes, and it's a you try it problem. So go ahead and pause, try it this uh, question and then come back and see if you did it correctly. This question asks, what is the mass of 4.78 times 10 to the 24 NO2 molecules? Okay, so we're given 4.78 times 10 to the 24th molecules of nitrogen dioxide. We need to find how many grams that is equal to. So we need to go to grams of NO2. Alright, so to get from molecules to grams, okay, we cannot go directly, we got to go through moles first. Okay, then we go to grams. Remember, moles is always the middleman. 
if we're converting something that's not moles into something other thing that's not moles, we gotta go to moles first. So let's do that. Start with 4.78 times 10 to the 24th molecules of NO2. And so we gotta get rid of those molecules of NO2. So we'll put those on the bottom. And uh, like we said, we gotta get to moles first. So we're gonna put moles of NO2. All right, so that's gonna cancel our molecules. But we're not done yet, because we need to go to grams. All right, so we need to get rid of these moles of NO2, put them on the bottom of the next conversion factor. And in this conversion factor, we're gonna go to grams of NO2. All right, so that's going to get rid of those units. So now let's take a look and plug in some numbers. Um, moles and molecules. Well, it's the same kind of thing as moles and atoms. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So we'll put that there. And then in one mole of NO2, we gotta look at our periodic table. Nitrogen is 14.01. Oxygen is 16.00, so we'll have one nitrogen and plus two oxygen. So we're gonna end up with 46.01 grams per mole for nitrogen dioxide. All right, so if we do our math, multiply the numbers on the top, divide it by the numbers on the bottom, we will get our answer. And in this case, 365 grams of NO2. All right, so let's see if that makes sense. Okay, so first sig figs, we start out with three. We got three in our uh, answer. For units, we needed to find grams right, so the mass or grams of NO2, and that's indeed what we found. And then last but not least, does the number make sense? Well, we're starting off with a huge number times 10 to 24, and then we multiply it by 46, so we're gonna even get even a bigger number. But then, if you take a look, we are dividing it by a big number um, with you know the exponent times 10 to 23. So, we should get a number that does not have an exponent, okay? Because these kind of exponents will um, kind of factor themselves out. Um, so it's not going to be a really huge number, and in fact, it's not. It's 365, which is relatively much smaller than what we started with. Um, so this does make sense. Plus, um, if you're you know weighing on the scale of grams, you're not going to have a huge number. Um, because that would kind of be impossible to do on, you know, because you're thinking of those little scales that we use in, in the lab. So you're not going to be able to, you know, figure out, you know, 365 times 10 to the, I don't know, 42nd or something on this, on the scale. Okay. So yes, indeed, this answer does make sense. All right. And that is all for this lecture. We will see you next time.